good morning. You know, y'all want to be down with the Knicks. Yeah. In the place to be. Yo, I feel good. How y'all feel? Because Coach Five feel great right now. We are on a six game winning streak. We are a half a game out of four because the Hawks and the Celtics are 31 and 26, and we are 31 and 27. Whoa. Yo. Yo. JN told you. I told you. 32, 35 wins this season. Beginning of the season, I said this. Yeah, I'm taking my flowers on this one, y'all. I am. I said Tibbs was the right coach for this squad. And quiet is kept. I kept this under my hat. But quiet is kept. I told my wife about a couple of months ago that I felt like we end up having like uh, a winning streak to end the season. Yeah, I'm on fire. Coach Fire in the building. Now, uh, <laughs> big shouts to my partner, Danny B. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to do uh, Knickerbocker Avenue this past Saturday. I apologize. That was on me. I had some family stuff I had to take care of. But he held it down on Chris LeBron's uh, off the ball show yesterday, and that was dope. You know what I mean? Got to hold it down for the old, for the for the crew, for the home team and them. Big shouts to MG the Great. Did a little thing with him last night called The Great Show, where we were talking movies and stuff. Jumped all in on that DCEU. But, yo, that's just what was going on this weekend. Back to these games, bro. Back to these games. Since I did not speak upon the Dallas joint, I will speak upon it now. Yo, I'm sorry. It's always nice when we beat Dallas. You know what I mean? If anything, Dallas isn't a rival, but Dallas games are more interesting because of that whole poor Zingas factor. But quite honestly, right now, this Luca cries like a little baby every five minutes thing is probably going to be a new thing that drives Nick fans crazy when we play Dallas. I mean, this dude cries when baskets are made. He cries when baskets are missed. This dude just cries a whole lot. Like, one of the most skilled cats on the planet. No doubt. No doubt. But, yo, wind me a river right about now with this guy, man. Like, come on, dude. I'm sorry that the NBA taught you that this is how you do it, but this is really not how you do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yo, again, my Knicks, these guys, you know what I mean? Julius Randle is our star. I'm sorry to be the one to break it to you for those who still are holding out hope that we're going to trade or get a, 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 a superstar. Dude, he is the superstar. I'm telling you. If he was on New Orleans or another team right now doing what he's doing, we'd be screaming for him in the offseason and y'all know that. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's really, really good to see these guys gelling and coming together the way that they are right now in the time that they are. You know what I mean? This is just... Yo, I mean, dude, you could have signed me up for a 500 season. Let's just keep that 100. You could have signed, you could have signed me up for us being in the playing tournament. You know what I mean? You could have signed me up for all of that. Did I know we were going to turn into this? Not at all. Well, no, no. I did kind of. I did kind of. I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm excited. I, I am I am I am thrilled because we haven't seen this this vibe this vibe hasn't been around since insanity and that was a two week vibe this is a season vibe this is so much more sustainable than 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 
that hocus pocus that we, you know, some of us cherish. Some of us is just like, I, right, this, this, this is something. But, you know, uh, they had beat New Orleans before the Mavericks. And Zion is a, is a beast, man. Listen, Zion is really something special. Uh, but so is Brandon Ingram. Let's just keep that a hundred too. Stan Van Gundy got some core pieces to really, really work with. Uh, I will say this. I will say this, guys. And I don't know how some folk are gonna feel about it when 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 they hear me say it. But Lonzo didn't necessarily impress me in the two times I've seen him in the last few days. You know, I understand he's younger than her than than Hayden, but dude, he was 0 for 7 uh, in the game prior to last night from 3, and I believe he was like 1 one for 5 or something like that even last night, 1 for 6, something like that. I mean, if we, if, if, if we need a guy that can shoot going forward, then we need a guy that can shoot, you know what I mean? I mean, sure, Lonzo could distribute the ball a bit better than Elf, but Elf's defense is honestly way better. You know, like, it's tough. It really is. Because uh, this offseason is going to be very, very, very interesting in regards to all of that. But, and I'm not saying that what, we, what I saw was indicative, because, again, with proper coaching and, you know, a better all-around team and game plan, you know what I mean, things for that young man could definitely be a lot brighter. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not out on Lonzo, but I definitely need to see more tape of him going forward. Uh, and now last night's nice game again, Zion beast 30 points. You know what I mean? I mean, when they said the comparison is, Charles Barkley from the waist down and LeBron from the waist up, I found that interesting and, 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 and kind of accurate, you know. So, Zion, especially if he starts getting that three-point shot in a few years, I don't expect him to get that shot like the next year, the year after. You know, he's a big man. He's got a lot of inside moves and stuff like that. Yeah, I think he can eat, like, very well. <laughs> Playing that way, so he doesn't necessarily. He needs to be. He needs a consistent J, though. He needs a consistent mid range to keep him to keep defenders honest. But he don't need the three just yet. He will eventually need it, yes. But I don't think he'll need it right away. But man, we've got a back to back Tuesday and Wednesday. And these could possibly be the most important games we play in this week. Because we've got Charlotte, who is currently the number eight seed. And then we've got the Hawks, who are currently the number four seed. And potentially the place that we want to live at. So, we gotta... I hate back-to-backs because fatigue is a real thing. You know what I mean? Uh, it was start and, and, and we've got the Knicks and and, 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 and and fatigues and bruises and stuff already from just the season. You know what I mean? No, uh, Nerlens, he hurt his hand yesterday. You know, Derrick Rose been taking abuse like all like all season. Uh. I'm glad to see Tibbs utilizing Kevin Knox and Frank Moore. Along with Obi, what I've been noticing is Obi comes in first. And then depending on defensively or how things are flowing offensively, he'll either get short minutes or he'll get he'll get decent minutes, but then on the second go around it'll be Kevin Knox. And Kevin really just got to shore up his defense, man, because I'm confident in his offense. But he just can't, you know, that's the thing. Our bread and butter is deep. 
So that's that's what we that's what we hang our hats on. Uh, I am legitimately had a great conversation with MG the Great last night after the show, and we were talking about what the Knicks' future is. And of course, he wants us to go, you know, draft a, 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 a dynamic point guard. I agree. It's just that that dynamic point guard isn't going to be of any use to us next year. We aren't in that kind of a rebuild mode now to where I feel like we can wait for a point guard to uh, develop enough to you know, help impact a, a, a contending team. Not to say that we're going to be a contending team next year, but if we continue to, uh, to tick up the way that we have, there's really no reason why we aren't. Just being, just being real. There's really no reason why we wouldn't be to make a couple of moves and let that team gel by the end of next season. You know why? Why wouldn't we? You know, be in. We would have been in a playoff second year in a row. You know, hopefully then that going into that third season, that's the third year in a row. Hopefully we will be at a at a competing, uh, contending form. You know, that's kind of where this is trending. I'll say so. While a dynamic point guard would be great, I think having a vet point guard, and don't mistake vet for 30, 32, 35 year old. I'm not necessarily talking about that. You know, Lonzo is 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 a vet. Again, I'm just like, I need his jump shot to be a bit more on than what I saw. But, you know, he's out there. There's, there's a few names that's gonna be out there in a few weeks. But uh, right now, guys, enjoy this. Enjoy this. This is like a wonderful dessert that we just get to have. You know, and I'm just happy with it, you know. And I love our fight. I love I love our guys, man. I mean, OB and M dancing to the New York, New York. Yo, wow. Derek Rose is in there being all leadershipy. You know what I mean? During the huddle, I mean, dude, it was just all kinds of vibes going on in just that little moment. And um, I recorded that joint. So this Candy Corner this week, uh, we will definitely go over that. Hopefully, I'll have Danny B on the Candy Corner this week. So that's going to be cool. Uh, Don Will of Tanya Morgan should be stopping by the Candy Corner this Wednesday. So that's definitely going to be on point and popping. Uh, make sure you hang out. Stay tuned to the, uh, well, make sure you watch Danny B's Born to Drive this morning because I know he's dropping some wonderful two to three minute drill thoughts and, 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 and ideas and feelings and great stuff. So look out for that this morning. Uh, look out for us this Saturday because we're going to have the Hawks and uh, Hornets games to talk about. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go next. You know what I mean? Let's go next.